cryptography is about mathematics, it's about science, it's about politics, it's about privacy, it's about human rights, it's about technology, it's a whole mess of different things. And, and what you have is something, suddenly the development of the telegraph. You can send messages around the world instantaneously. And um, encryption is important because if you're going to send messages, you need to make sure those messages aren't necessarily going to be intercepted and stolen. Um, with, with radio communication, you have that same situation. And, and when we get to the Second World War, um, prior to the Second World War, the Germans realized that, that radio's around. You can send messages across battlefields in, in, in an instant. But if I can send a radio message across a battlefield in an instant, then the other side can also tap into the, those radio channels. Mm. So if we're going to have high-tech radio communication, we need to have high-tech encryption. Pencil and paper encryption isn't going to be good enough. And so the Germans, um, actually other countries started working on it as well, but, but it was abandoned in Scandinavia and in America as well. The Germans were the only ones that really took it to its logical conclusion and invented something that looks a bit like a typewriter, a big clanky typewriter with a keyboard, and you type in your message and out comes gibberish. You send the gibberish over the radio. At the other end, somebody's got one of these Enigma machines, one of these clanky typewriters. They type in the gibberish and the real original message comes out. And the complexity of the machine guarantees you your privacy. Show us the complexity of the machine right now. I believe that you yes. have a machine, an actual Enigma machine from... And is this an actual... This was actually used during the Second World War, this, this machine? Yeah, th this one I, I don't know a huge amount about. Uh, I, I've got one in London. I'm uh -huh. very, very fortunate to have one, which was used in the Second World War. Um, and this one... Uh, uh, would have been used in the Second World War. It's an army machine. Now, do, people in the audience, don't worry. You're not going to have to crane your necks. We're actually going to have a, a, a shot of it up here on the um, on yeah. the on the so, stage so for you, so it, you can it see would that been, a bit would better. It would have been carried around this this nice wooden box. It's pretty heavy, um, and when you open it up, you can see it does look just like a, a big old-fashioned typewriter. It's got a keyboard here, and the lamp board is up here. So that's where the gibberish appears is at the top. Um, and if we zoom in a little bit up to about here, if I type in the letter P. Um, let's see what happens. The letter E lights up. So P is encrypted as an E. But what's really clever about the Enigma is if I type in an E again, a P again, a V lights up. If I type in P again, a Y lights up. So we have a random letter generator. The encryption doesn't seem to follow any kind of pattern. And if you want a good form of encryption, that's what you need, a kind of random letter generator. So where is this, this randomness coming from? Well, we can open up this machine here. <coughs> One thing we can tell is it's probably built pre-war because this enamel plate was, uh, was only used pre-war. Um, during the war, they were churning out these machines so quickly, they just had a, a paper uh, stuck there, which would have come undone. So uh, here's the lamp board. Here's the keyboard. There are 26 wires coming out of the keyboard into the lamps. But before they go into the lamps, they go round the side through these three rotors here. And uh, I can take these rotors out. Um, whoops. Oh dear. <laughs> see, it's not my machine. I'm very, very worried about breaking it. Um, so we, we can see here it's got 26 contacts. So the, the 26 wires from the keyboard go into the 26 contacts, and they come out at these contacts here and into those 26 contacts. But in the middle of this object, it's like spaghetti. So an A will go in at 12 o'clock, but it might come out as uh, an F. It will go in here as an F, it might come out as a G, and so on. So the scrambled wiring inside these rotors is what leads to the encryption. But on its own, that's not enough. Scrambling is OK. Scrambling is simple. We can, we can scramble without needing a machine. Uh, what the Enigma allows us to do, let me just set it up in a certain way. Uh, I've got it set up here, 21, uh, 16. There we go, and uh, 11. So if I do that same process again, if I hit P uh, three times, I hit the P first time, the lamp lights up, but also you'll have seen that that rotor moved. If that rotor moves, then the, key, the, the wiring goes in at a different junction. If it goes in at a different junction, it follows a different electrical path. If I type P again, you'll see the lamp light up, different lamp, but also the rotor will move. There we go. And it's, it's this dynamism from the rotors that gives you the, 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 the complicated encryption. And when that rotor's done a full revolution, it kicks the middle one. When that's done a full revolution, it kicks the, the end one. So it's like a mileometer on, on a car. So that's all very well at, in terms of creating the, the message. H what happens at the other end? How, how, do you trans how do they decode it? Okay, well, well, first of all, you've got to have a machine. 
So you've got to have an Enigma machine. That'll help. <laughs> but, but, but with all forms of encryption, this is called the algorithm. This box of tricks is the algorithm. It does the scrambling. But you have to assume that the other side know the algorithm. They know that they've got the machine. And, and the, the, the Brits, the allies, we'd have had one of these machines. And so the real security relies in how you set up the machine. So, um, and, and your machine has to be set up in the same way as mine. So, for example, I've got three rotors here. Those three rotors could be swapped around. Uh, three rotors have got six permutations. Um, this rotor, before I send the message, could be adjusted to one of 26 positions. That could be done to one of 26 positions. That to one of 26 positions. 26 cubed uh, from memory, I think, is around 20,000. I could be wrong. Multiplied it by the six permutations gets us to about 100,000. Um, I can also change where this rotor kicks that rotor. That's another factor of 26. That went up to like 2.5 million. Um, that one I can vary where that one kicks out. That's another 26. We're up to the hundreds of millions. And, and there's a bit down here. If we pan down a bit, um, it's what's called a plug board here. Now, all this does is it, it swaps letters. So if I plug a, uh, well, Q with W, when I type Q, the path follows W's path. And when I type W, it follows Q's path. Now, the there are 20, 20 cables here and 26 holes. And, and my memory is, and it may be wrong, but I, I think there are 100 million million different ways to wire up that simple bit of kit, multiplied by the 100 million or so we had before. And your machine has to be set up exactly the same way as this. So how do we communicate about, how do you tell me what the configuration of my machine needs to be in a way that doesn't uh, suffer the same uh, you know, lack of, of, of encryption that we could have had just by communicating freely in the first place? It's, it's kind of crude. What, what you have is every month um, you have a bit of paper. And that bit of paper has the settings of the machine. And uh, we might print, we, we may be in the North African network, uh, Rommel and his troops. And everyone, uh, everyone in Rommel's network would have one of these bits of paper. And we'd wake up in the morning, we'd say, right, it's the 3rd or uh, 4th of June, uh, and we'd set up our machine according to that 4th of June recipe. And you've got the same piece of paper, then we can communicate. But that bit of paper has to be biked across the desert. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we, the, the guy delivering it may be incompetent, he may be a double agent, uh, he may lose it. Uh, this is known as the key distribution problem. And it's expensive, time consuming, and risky. I see myself becoming a different the size of a hot and cold spot. I'm going to go on a bar and search on the universe. I have 400,000 years old. I have 400,000 years old. So let me ask you this. Nature holds up this ruler. I go to 10.